Welcome back to the Light em Up Lounge. It's Wednesday, time for another exciting live show, time for another exciting interview. A very special guest, a dear, dear friend and fellow, a man who has shaped the cigar industry for many, many years now with uh, tremendous accomplishments for the CEO brand and under general cigars. But um, after his brief retirement from his previous role, he is back and he's back big time. I'm delighted and honored and super happy to welcome my dear brother Rick Rodriguez here with us today for one of the very first interviews about his new endeavor, West Tampa Tobacco. Rick, welcome to Light Him Up. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's a pleasure and an honor. Welcome. No, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to uh, allow me to share this new chapter of my life. Uh, it's uh, something I've been looking forward to. Thank you about uh, for the last two or three years. And uh, I can't believe it's happening. Yeah, I can't believe it. Now, I, I think it's it's probably hard to understand or, or even just to, to fathom and imagine what uh, what it must mean for like pretty much anybody launching your own company, launching your own brand and seeing your vision and your dreams come to fruition for such a long time. You have dedicated your heart and soul, your efforts, your blood, sweat and tears to incredible projects, wonderful cigars, cigars that have changed the industry and have become paradigm shifts for the premium cigar world. And here you are now spearheading ultimately your own vision and dream. I, I know it's, it's impossible to compare apples and, and pears and, and these different chapters in your life, but how would you say that your time with CAO has A, shaped and inspired you and then also totally changed your perspective on the cigar world, but ultimately led to the, the culmination of it all with, with you starting your own company and your own brand, Ricky. It's uh, hard to, uh, you know, uh, tell in words how much and, you know, how important Jumbo Cigar and CEO was to my life and how hard it was for me to make the decision to leave not a company, leave my friends behind mm -hmm. uh, because some of these people that I've been you know happy to work with or uh, you know for the last 23 years of my life sometimes I've spent more time than, with them than my family uh, it's amazing to me but uh, you know what General Tagar and CEO taught me is if you want it you can have it if you mm -hmm. want that tobacco if you want that box you want that story to be told this is the outlet for you to do it. And so that, that training, that situation that I was offered, uh, kind of, because if you go back in time, when General Cigar took over CAO, um, they were screaming, you're going to destroy this mom and pop business. And General Cigar was smart enough, said, Ricky, it's going to be your company. Uh, so think about that way. We're not going to interfere with any project that you want to offer your fan base called CAO. So uh, taking that in mind, um, what they taught me is how to do what I'm going to do in the future. Launch brands, uh, decide what tobaccos, what stories to share, who to work with. Uh, so the only thing I think to me that I'm looking forward to that I didn't receive from Jello Cigar is the ability to work with the people I want to work with. Uh, because when you're working for a company, sometimes they're going to say to you, you need to do this for this guy's. Uh, I don't believe in that guy. I don't believe that he, you know, has the passion to, to product. Uh, no, 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 that you have to do that. And so you have to work with that guy do that a bit. And so that's the only thing I'm going to not miss from Jello Cigar because what West Tampa is going to give me is I have the ability to only work with the people I believe in, I trust, 
and they trust me. And so there's no fringe player. Hey, bro, I don't believe in your product, but if it sells, I'll bring, bring it in. No, 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 no. If you don't have the passion for our company, if it's strictly sales, we're not for you. There's just so many uh, other companies out there that only want sales, 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 sales. Uh, this is not me. Uh, what I've been trained to do is educate people. Educate, go into this little factory last week. I was amazed at how much I was able to help them understand what I want from them. And that growing process uh, was amazing. Tears were shed. Tears, actually tears were shed by me and the owner when we were walking away at the first night. I looked at him, bro. He looked at me and you can see it. You can feel it right now. Uh, that was a connection that I haven't had in a long time with a factory uh, worker. Yeah, so it was beautiful. It was, I know that I have this right now. I have the a power in my hand to change people's lives. And uh, it's a, a burden sometimes, but I, I just, I want that opportunity not to make money. That's not the, it's what it is. It's about helping these little guys grow their business, help their community, help their families, and we're going to benefit uh, selflessly off of their hard work. Would you say that this is a, a rather recent evolution in, in the way you think about this and the way you approach starting your own company? Because I, I can imagine at, at a younger age and with probably le fewer years of experience in the industry, your impetus might be... I want to build my own brand now. I, I just want to see my name out there. You know, it's probably an yeah, ego yes, thing as yes, well. Yes. And just the, the pure wish of, of creating for for your own means and, and for your own good. But but what you just described is, is a very different approach where it's it's more of a humble perspective and, and, and you bringing something to the table that hopefully a lot of people will enjoy and, and dig into, but with a very different approach and mindset behind it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, time is everything. Uh, even a year or two ago, I wasn't ready. My mind wasn't ready to focus on the challenges ahead. I was happy. I was just doing my job with no problems. I controlled everything. I controlled everything I wanted to do, the time I wanted to do it. I had the luxury, a lifestyle that like, okay, you want me to work harder? Uh, for what reason? More money. Uh, that's not ringing my bell for the opportunity to share your knowledge. Okay, stop right there. What do you mean, share my mom? You can go to a factory that needs your help to grow. You can train them. They can, you can offer them advice and how to deal with tobacco. Oh my God, yes, I don't want that opportunity. When? That's a year ago. So time is everything. So two years ago, my mind wasn't ready. Maybe my knowledge was ready, but my mind and heart was not ready. Today is ready for this uh, new adventure to help uh, because, you know, uh, if you know me for five minutes or five years, uh, when you see me, it's all about how I connect with my fans and how I educate them to enjoy any cigar. I don't care if you're enjoying Fuente, Popines, uh, you know, uh, CAO. I don't care. Let me help you understand why you enjoy Popines, why you enjoy Fuente, why you enjoy a Walker Patel, and that brings me joy. And so now I have the opportunity to do this, uh, not only on my fan base, also affect factories. Because the guys I'm working with uh, yesterday at CL, these are some legendary people that I was learning from. Now I, I'm the teacher in a factory for the first time in my life. Launching your own brand is not something that you do overnight. It takes time, it takes planning, strategizing, fine tweaking, sometimes years. Um, when, when was the, the moment when, when you had that epiphany and you realized now's the time, let's work on this and let's make a dream reality? Well, I, I think uh, uh, it expected me on the shutdown in 2020. Uh, we had a lot of time. Everybody had a lot of time. And that's You're seeing that shift around the world. What am I doing? It's this, this drive for money 
at so you know at 30 the drive is that because you're raising your family you're starting your family well, you need 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 to support but at 60 55 you start to kind of peel back what is the meaning of this uh why am i working so hard and so i think you know about really about a year ago when i really talked to my partner gus martinez and he says to me what are you doing you know i know you ricky i know what you want to do the company you're working for is not going to allow you to do that not because it's bad or good because they don't need that help uh, you want to help somebody let's do this business and you can help not only fans to understand your tobacco shop owners uh interviewers but your factories and like that really got my attention when he meant the factory and so when you see this little factory i'm working with i'm used to walking into a room that we have 200 rollers 300 rollers in the dr 500 rollers uh the table is like bleh. and but uh when i worked into this factory that have 15 rollers 15 tables like okay i'm not in oz anymore you know I, you know this is different and that was a challenge for me and so i look forward to it because um benji menendez said you know, Ricky, your problem is going to be you have to park everything you knew about CAO for about production, about launching, because you need to scale it down. Your access to all this beautiful tobacco is gone, is gone. So now you have to really sharpen your pencils to fine tune the lack of tobacco, but you can make great cigars with only two, three, four wrappers, you don't need 15, 20 wrappers. You don't need to have access to 20 spillers. Two or three, you can work magic over time with these little products, uh, of little tobaccos that you have. So I think that that was a, the driving goal for me. Ricky, if, if, if I may um, sort of jump in there, um, because what I'm curious about is, uh, you mentioned the change in availability of high quality material. Now, mm -hmm. is, that, is that just in terms of the width or the depth? And, and by that, I mean, yeah, what you said is great. perfectly, perfectly feasible mm -hmm. and, and reasonable instead of like 15 different wrappers, you probably have access to four. But is it mm -hmm. also a matter of the quality that you can access or just the bandwidth of different flavor profiles or, or seed varietals or origins that you can play with? One of our top questions to the, uh, the factory they choose, who are you purchasing your tobacco from? Uh, where do you, uh, you were sourced? Because uh, it had to be a, from a source that I knew because we're getting the tobacco from them. And so it's now in the hands of this factory. So we all know just because the farmer gave you a great tobacco, you can ruin that tobacco or highlight the tobacco through your process of that, uh, you know, fermentation, aging, and all that you do to get that uh, cigar out. So I'm not concerned of the varieties. I am concerned of the amount of access do you have. If I do this tobacco, if I make this blend, do you have enough resources to so send us every year that we need that blend. So if you're going to come to me and say, hey, bro, the first wave, we're cool. The second wave, eh, the access to tobacco is not going to be there. So we have to change it. No way. No way. So this not what. So we had to question and deep dive. Not only we don't care about what you have, how much you have, and who is providing that tobacco for me, for you. It's a good source that we know. These guys know how to grow tobacco. We have no concerns that they're going to meet the demands that we have going on. Um, how helpful are some of the relationships that you have built during your time with CAO when it comes to the, the, the sourcing and the purchasing of the tobacco? Can you help and support the factories that you're working with and then provide them access to, to other raw material that they probably haven't used before? You know, that was a question that we asked. Are you interested in uh, uh, receiving new tobaccos? And their answer, yeah, if I can receive it right now because we're so small, we don't have the opportunity to get in line. 
but with me, uh, I can't open doors for us that uh, uh, maybe was close to this little guy because in the line of people that's purchasing that tobacco, it goes from General Cigar, Tadis, you know, the big guys, the second guys, the third guys, and all of a sudden the fourth, fifth tier guys, like, what do you have left? nothing are this scrap that everybody passed over. So that was definitely a, a question that we were saying, are you interested? The answer was yes. Uh, as far as, you know, I was amazed that when I did call on people, the band guys, the box guys, are you you've got to be kidding me, Ricky? I am so busy right now. Everybody, we're at, I mean, full tilt. Uh, so maybe we can put you on the band schedule in March or uh, March. Perfect. No, March of 2023. I, no, <laughs> no, no, no. How do I slide into and uh, the band guy action, bro, beautiful band guys in uh, Florida. And he says, you know what, for you, Ricky, I know you, I, I trust you. I will have my team put your bands on Saturday and Sunday. I do not work on Saturday and Sunday, but I will make sure that you have. And then we had to go through Box Factory. When, bro, 2023, bro, I need it this year. Oh, no way, Ricky. All right, for you, yes. So the doors, I didn't take advantage of these people, but these people want to be something. They, they sense this is special. I want to be a part of this journey. So if I do not do it for him right now, he's going to find somebody who's going to do it. So we'll move uh, whatever we need to move and get you in line quicker than if you're just not non nobody with some cash in your hand. And he said that, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Good point. Uh, Ricky, somebody wants to say hello to you. Hello. All is here joining us hello my okay, dear hello. friend my oh dear my old old ricky <laughs> yeah bro i, I love you, bro. i miss I'm, you i'm really miss you and thank thank you so much you are uh alive <laughs> and me too unfortunately we have also everyday airstrike alarms so uh i will not tell you about the the situation i now, pray but... for you guys i i think but... about you guys every time i turn on the news because what I discovered when I was there was just beautiful, yes. beautiful people that opened not their their arms to me, their homes to me, their food to me. It was, bro, you know how special it was. Bro. Yes, you, you know how, how is it special. Uh, you, uh, how, uh, how many times we, we spent in split uh, with cigars yep. and and drinks etc and uh, i really miss miss you all i i hope uh, i will survive uh, uh, i will do everything to do this and uh, i suppose uh, that we we can meet uh, uh, in some some better times uh, and uh, actually i was i was really surprised that, that you was moved uh, from ceo from stg and uh, I'm still loving your products, uh, your Thank new you. inventions, and I hope uh, maybe maybe you'll you'll find some possibility to, to send to send us as a humanitarian aid uh, some some new products uh, uh, with uh, with some weapon because your your cigars is really a strong weapon. For, I would for, love, for you people. know what I would love that. So I, you know, should do them a favor just so when we're done contact us, us and give us yes, an yeah, address we, and i would definitely always, do yes, that we always in contact and uh, uh thank, thank you very much uh, you, you, your job is one of the best uh, jobs in the world so uh, so my friends uh, sorry I, I unfortunately i need to escape because uh, a very strange situation every every night every day uh, but I wish you a good, uh, good mood, good talk, and uh, I think you are one one of the brilliant uh, speakers uh, uh, from the cigar world. So God bless you, friends, bro. Cheers, God bless bye you. Bye. God bye. bless you all. Bye bye. Go. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Oleg, be, be wow. safe and well. And uh, another testament that um, cigars is what brings us all together. It's and uh, as, a, as a global cigar community and family, 
world together. So yeah. thank you so much. Thought. Thank you so much, my dear. Rick, piggybacking on, on what you said before with, with the current stress um, on, on all the supply chain and, and, and the issues with even the, the, the most simplistic and, and basic things now, whether that's wood uh, or, or any other raw materials, um, it's real and uh, it's, it, it's, it's a constant battle for all these things and it probably won't get uh, much better over the next couple of months. Do you think that is an opportunity or also, you know, a necessity for different industries and in this case, specifically the, the premium cigar industry to adjust and probably be more creative on how to package product, how product wow, can, wow, can be displayed, wow. presented yeah, and just yeah. create something that has never been thought about, but create mm -hmm. that paradigm shift now because it's needed. It's amazing you're saying that to me. Uh, we had a meeting about uh, two months ago on an issue. I said, being new, we can do whatever we want to do. And I think we should start to think about packaging, not just because the access is hard to get. I'm thinking about the future. And I realized, you know, it breaks my heart to see these people struggle to make these boxes and then end up in landfills. Because there are only so many purses and fucking watches or clocks you can make on a box. And so this beautiful product just gets tossed away. And I'm thinking to myself, how many trees, how, how much gas uh, to get this product to you? And what are we doing to the environment to this? And so I said to my, there's got to be a box that we can buy and host. Hey, bro, this is made from trash that somebody picked up out of the fucking oceans and they, you know, kind of, I don't know what they do, but this is not like your typical box, but this is to save the future. Not me because, you know, bro, I'm 62 years old. If God gives me another 20 years, we can survive. But I'm thinking about my daughter and her children and what is that world going to look like in 50 years so you're spot on i am thinking about introducing new uh boxes new presentations new outlets that it's going to just shift I mean, bro you're not buying this box i don't care if it's a great cigar i should be able to pack it in a used tire you don't care but you pay for that too so anything fancy you pay for that so i believe if i can shave some money and Uh, take that money and put it back in the consumer pocket that is what i want to do so yeah for sure i'm thinking about ways to present product uh, uh you know product in a different way great to hear um, on top of that what are some of the the key things that you said i want to do radically different now that i'm in charge it's purely my own responsibility it's my company but those are things that i hold so dear to my heart we need to change this there's so many uh, things that i i want to change respect for the rollers um uh helping these people out um also you know i don't know how to answer the question because i'm not there yet i know that uh, you know what the past is given me the you know the ability of amazon tobacco first time use maybe that's not in the future but there's other things that i can offer my fans so uh there's a, a line that we're going to create called attic series and this is a small batch project that we're going to introduce to at the trade show this year and ship in october and this is a connection to me and sharing my stories through these cigars and these whacked out stories of my me growing up and these stories that I share with everybody that are like, oh my God, I never, I would never thought that you had to go through that to get here. And so all these stories are going to be done uh, by the situation of this small project called uh, the Attic Series. And it's a, a way to connect to these guys or girls through my stories. You know, so that's a project I could never do uh, in CAO. For sure. That's too, uh, you know, uh, keen on just me. 
Um, you, you mentioned some of the things that you want to introduce um, to the portfolio later on. Now, um, with the with the original press release and the initial launch of West Tampa Tobacco Company, you announced two different lines. What is your strategy moving forward on um, which core brands do you want to build? Um, again, is it more about width or, or depth? You know, we, we often talk here on the show um, about whether as a manufacturer you have a clear and concise path and a, a, a very small or well-structured portfolio with the strong core, whereas others probably take more of a of width approach and, uh, and, and try to throw as many new SKUs and, and FASICs onto the market as possible. I don't think we're going to do, do that. I think we believed and uh, offer West Tampa, offer course as a, you know, uh, a line that's going to be in the market all the time. And that's enough right now. And so we don't want to dominate the humidor. What we do want to do is whatever product we do offer is something that everybody wants. So that you don't need to be a buffet to survive in this world. You can be a steakhouse, a fish house, and be you know, happy. You don't need to offer a little bit of everything for everybody. And the, the other thing I'm going to take away from Joe Cigar and CAO, for sure CAO, is to not corner yourself in a corner. Because there's some guys in the market right now, if you look at them, they're cornering the market. So if they want to introduce a mild cigar, they're fan base because they have offered this kind of situation for the last 20 years. And if you introduce this, like, okay, this is not for us. Who is this for? And so they react to that very quickly and go back to what they do. You know, this full body, full spice in your face kind of blends. But we want to say, we're going, when we launch, we're going to launch a cigar. Look, look at black and white. Black and white is different. Different palettes going to gravitate to the cigars. And so after that course, a little bit higher price point, a little bit better packaging for the guys that are like, I want a premium cigar, a super premium cigar when I smoke a cigar. So we're going to offer that. So we're going, it's going to be fun to say to yourself, I know exactly what Ricky is going to do next time because you're not. And that's the beauty of CAO because we did offer you Brasilia and then all of a sudden we offer you Italian tobacco and you offer Amazon tobacco. I said you offer something from Connecticut from the US. Bro, what's your game? Where's your lane? There's no lane. We're on a highway. And so that's what uh, we want to do. So we're going to give you good product that you can be happy to smoke, uh, be proud to share with your fans, but it's going to be different price points different tobaccos, different sizes, uh, different stories. So it's more about a range and offering something for, for, for various different palettes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not just uh, your ramen place where you only get uh, one or exactly. two particular dishes. We're not going to all, all you, we're just now going to be an eight to $10 a range cigar company. Now, we're going to introduce, there is fans of high-end cigars, uh, high-end bourbons, but there's a fans that are like, bro, no, Johnny Walker Brock, that's fine for me. How about Pappy? <laughs> that's not my style. You know, so we're going to, like, we knew the foundation should be our core group. That is the reason we launched Black and White. But now we're going to take those guys on the journey and offer to other uh, people, like, I'm not that eight to ten dollar guy i'm a 15 to 20 dollar guy we have the offering here for you too so we're going to be a variety of things price points cigars tobaccos presentations stories behind it we're going to have fun with this uh, a new company called west tampa tobacco benjamin Mendes, ernesto you have trained and fine tweaked your palette with some of the biggest names the cigar world has ever seen. And with the approach that you just described, do you feel like it's easier 
or sometimes even a little harder to blend to various different profiles, different styles, different budgets, because ultimately I think most most people and, and even even most creators can can testament that um, you, you, you might have a certain preference for yourself or you might have a certain style that you usually blend towards or you lean towards. Do you find it difficult to then create such such a variety of different experiences and offer that with or do you say, well, no, actually not, because it's, it's, it's fun for you and you, you can play around with it and then and, and always, uh, you know, pull something different out of the head. I think uh, if I was, uh, when I uh, stopped training and I took over working with uh, LaGloria, if I was still with LaGloria and leaving, I would have a problem because LaGloria is in the corner. They, that fan base, what's this for LaGloria? When I went to work with CAO and I thought, you know, I don't want to go. I don't know because they don't, they don't have direction. And I fought for direction. Now I realize, oh my God, oh my God, what CAO allowed me to do is I want to do something from the Amazon. Okay, you could do it because we could not do Amazon Basin and launch it under Macanoodle or La Gloria, or Punch, it would, I, what, what are you doing? But CAO had a blank sheet every time we went to a project. That, that board was blank. So what do you want? What do you want to do this guy? Because we had groups, flavors, world, new age, classics. But it, a lot of factories only have classic style, new age style, you know, papine, you know, like full body, full flavor, you know, a man's cigar, a great factory, a great product. But to me, that's one dimensional. But what the CAO offered us are for me to learn, you can be anything you want if you believe in what you're doing. Because these guys are smart enough and girls are smart enough. You can't just pull the wool over the rod. It's a CAO. Of course, you're going to buy it for $50. What's the story? No, no, no. We love you, Ricky, but we're not crazy. But if you share that story the right way and you, you perform the right, I'll buy that score. But you can't uh, you know, just go out there and in your mindset, they're going to accept everything and anything for me. You know, that's the reason I, 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 I think when I talk to people out there and I'm doing events, and I've always said this throughout that event, I would say this. Guys, you think as a manufacturer, what we want to hear is this. You light our cigar. You taste it. Oh, my God, I love it. You turn around and you throw that cigar away because you didn't want to, you know, piss me off or embarrass me. We don't want that. What we want and what I realized, the guy that I didn't want to talk to or the, the guy that I really want to talk to, the guy in the back doing this. Okay. Oh my God. I don't like that. Now I will approach that guy. Hey, bro, you're smoking my new cigar. What do you think? Bro, I didn't like it. And you walk away. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. Not because you didn't like my cigar, because you didn't tell me. And the guy that has the balls enough to say, Ricky, I thought I was going to be more uh, body. It wasn't. I'm a full body cigar guy. And so I don't like it because the reason is mild. Bro, I can learn for that. So you want a full body cigar from CAO? And I hear that enough. That's my target for the next cigar. Oh, I want more sweetness. Oh, I can make you obsessive. Oh, I want uh, more resinous or, or really next flavor. Oh, I can give you Amazon Basin or Anaconda. So that was the beauty of working with Jello Cigar or CAO because it taught me you have a blank sheet where you want to go. Uh, where do you want to lead your people? And the path of your growing as a manufacturer, you're learning every time you release a cigar. And so I just want these fans, this, is, this cigar is so different than anything I've ever launched from C.A.R. LaGloria. And that's great because that's the next step. So if you're a fan of my blends, just follow my steps and we're going to have this journey and we're going to look back like, that was fun. The last 10 years, that Bro, you took me on a ride. 
not this. I, uh, I hate everybody that drives. Do you want a road that just goes 50 miles and straight? Or you want to really work your car up and down, senior? That's what you want. And so that's what I want to give them. I think it's a it's a fine line between doing exactly what you said, Ricky, and offering that variety and taking people on a ride, but still keeping an element of consistency or it's like like your signature, a fine handwriting, where even though it's different expressions, you always feel this is Rick Rodriguez, right? And right. it brings you back to the to the homeland and the promised land, and 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 you know this is where I want to be. Right. And, and secondly, yeah. I, I also believe that the approach that you described with, with CAO, that's not easy to pull off. And, and I don't think that hmm. many, many companies would have the opportunity or also the credibility to a certain extent to just venture in so many different directions without feeling or, you know, conveying a message of this is just a candy shop where, you know, like right. it's pretty much right, all right. over the place. But at the end, you don't feel like there, that there's a cohesive, clear story to be told. Yeah. So I think that's I challenging. It is challenging, but that's, you know, the beauty of, uh, you know, working with tobaccos in a factory. So uh, I want that challenge. I want, I think the fan base wants that challenge. All they want from it, uh, us as a manufacturer is I'll take the journey, but give me a good cigar. Re regardless if I like it or not, do not pinch me and like, you got me. Bro, this is, bro, this is a horrible cigar. You know, so I, I, I think every cigar that I've ever made or had anything to do with, you can say, okay, I don't like it, but I think my friend would love this cigar. I would love to share this with him. So if you look at me, uh, you, everybody knows I'm a, a Cameroon fan. So does that mean that I'm never going to have a Cameroon at West Tampa? No way I'm going to have a Cameroon. And I'm going to make the best Cameroon that my team can make to offer that fan of that. So like a chef, uh, you know, you, if you take that menu to your chef and you know your chef, And you show them, hey, bro, you like everything you cook. Oh, bro, he looks around. I hate fish. We're really, one, two, you had three fish dishes. On, I'm, I'm a, by the seashore. Of course I have fish. I'm a trained chef. I can cook anything, but I don't eat everything. So I can make a great cigar for the fan base. I'm not making cigars for Ricky. I'm making cigars that I think the fan base wants for me. If that's a mild cigar, a full body cigar, a medium body cigar, a unique cigar, unique tobacco, unique packaging, I want to give that to them. I think that's also a very important and interesting point to learn that, you know, there's, there's different ways of, of going about this. Certain people blend purely based on their own preferences and they create cigars that they love. And then whoever shares their, their opinion and perspective is, is, is welcome to the party. Um, and then there's the, the approach that you just described where you're fully aware of the audience that you're serving and, and you're providing something that will be enjoyed by many people, hopefully. So I, I think very interesting to, to understand where, where people are coming from there. Because we, we, you're a manufacturer, uh, you know, you, you start your business and you have a hit. Uh, what do you want to do? You automatically want to give the, the guy another hit close to that hit. So you start to force yourself to react to your success and not worry about let's take a chance and launch this. So if you do that automatically, if you do it at the beginning, all right. This is my style, but wait till the next style because it's completely different. It, because if West Tampa is a home run for us, naturally we should do a second version of West Tampa, kind of or like that. But no, no, because okay, we already had that fan cigar that's called West Tampa. There's a lot of smokers out there that doesn't like West Tampa, 
let's go to that direction and offer them some cigars that they go, okay, I can support Ricky now because West Tampa, I couldn't. But now this blend, I can definitely support him because he's talking to me. Yep. Mace had a question. Mace, good to see you, my friend, and uh, love to hear your question. Hey, guys. Uh, uh, Reinhard, thanks again for another great session. Um, Ricky, it's great to great to see, great to meet you. Really appreciate it. It's just Thank a really, it, I guess, around sort of if you if you go back in the history of you know you've been around some big manufacturers, you've been in the industry for a while, and now you're sort of setting out on your own. It's more a question of just specifically twofold. A, if you're looking at it as this is my USP, I'm going to do something different. What would you say that difference is? How are you going to sort of not so much change the industry, right? But just like, what do you feel you're going to add in terms of value to the industry? But also, I guess, on top of that, when you look at just your learnings, what would you say is probably like the biggest thing that you've learned from the big manufacturers, the big boys in the industry that you're going to try and incorporate into your new sort of new, you know, incorporation? I think, uh, you know, uh, I'll answer the second question first i think that that is uh you know how to launch cigar uh, uh, cigars how to get the information for your fan base and react to the information and adopt that uh, information to a cigar that we think they want uh because somebody's going to say i want more body that's not a lot of information to go off of but okay there is a more body but it is in the natural oh I meant to say I want a full body with a dark wrapper. Okay, you need to explain that further when you're talking to a manufacturer. So the ability to, to understand how to launch products, how to get everybody in line, because when you're marching and to create a cigar, everybody has to be in line. One guy off base will ruin your cigar. That could be a roller. He could say, okay, today, I'm going to use only this tobacco in my blend, not the other tobacco. Change my blend. You know, so you step out of place. The manufacturer can ruin tobacco. And uh, we should be fermenting the tobacco for 10 months, but uh, we shorted it to eight months. Change. So everybody, you have to identify to everybody. This is your responsibility. This is your job. And this is the reason I want you to control this this way. So General Cigar taught me how to interact with the farmers, how to interact with the, uh, the tobacco guys, how to interact with the rollers, how to interact with the, the band guys, the box guys, the you know, shipping guys, how to get every, do you know your job? Do you do not assume that everybody knows your job because they've been doing their job. You're a new company. You have to explain to everybody, this is the way I expect you to represent uh, of West Tampa. And this is the, the goals that we have in place for you. And so changing, uh, you know what? I think right now my shift, if I, to, bro, I, I know I say it a lot to educate. I think my change of what I'm going to offer when I retire fully or die, whatever you want. To talk, he was a teacher. He was a teacher. He taught me how to enjoy my cigar a little bit more today than I did yesterday. So if I, I'm known for that only, bro, bury me with a smile on my face because that is what I want to offer everybody. To understand what we're doing and peel that curtain open for you and say, this is the way we do it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share everything and anything with you that you want. So. If I want to change the uh, industry, pay attention to your fan gate base and talk to them. Don't assume do you know him or, or her, talk to them and you'll get to know her and him better because we all think we know our fan base. You don't, you have no clue until you do 2000 events and handshake, you know, uh, 50,000 people's hands and communicate one-on-one -on -one like we're doing right now. I love that. I love that. Perfect answer. Thank you so much, Rick. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Mace, wonderful question. Thank you. And uh, Ricky, without giving away too, too many of your, your secrets, but um, 
to teach and educate is, is a broad term and there's different ways of going about it. If you could select like a handful of key aspects that you would like to convey in your seminars, in your events, in the way you talk to people, where do you feel like the educational component needs to kick in the most? Or where do you find like there's the golden nuggets that need to be communicated more often and, and more prominently? Just do what we do and how we do it. I think there's a lack of, we just throw these terms around. This is from SM, uh, you know, uh, Nicaragua. The last time I checked, Nicaragua is a huge country that produces a lot of tobacco in areas that can receive to firm that tobacco sweetness or spice or pepper notes. So, so when we say, you know, SLE or, you know, what does that mean? So I think for me, diving deeper to understand, do not stop and take this answer. What's your blend? Oh, we have Nicaragua, Honduras, and Mexico. Stop. Where from? So I can understand when I'm smoking cigars what I have to experience. So, oh, SLE is going to be spicy tobacco. Okay, so now it's, okay, that's, that spice is from, yes, but the sweet tobacco is from my wrapper. And that wrapper is from uh, Connecticut. It's broadly. And that's, you know, how we do this is to ferment the tobacco and break down the starches to turn starches to what? Sugar. So I think uh, right now people know a lot, but they don't know enough. And so I think the hidden nuggets to share with uh, anybody is when I say this, what does it mean to you? Help me help you understand when I say this. Oh, it has a lot of Seiko. We all know Seiko. We all, how, what does that mean to you? In the tobacco plant, where is that at? I don't know. Okay, let me help you understand what you said to me. And so, and Benji, Benji, bless his heart, was a great teacher. And he taught me this. Ricky, with your knowledge, there's three ways you're going to be able to answer a question. When somebody says, what's the difference between Maduro and natural? And the first guy that raises his hand among 50 people, and you say, okay, I have a question. First question, all right, let's go. What is it? What's the difference between natural and Maduro? If you respond this way, okay, sir, how long have you been smoking? 10 years, and you don't know the difference by now, Maduro and natural, really? Let me, bro, every other hand is gonna go down. Why? Because I just embarrassed this guy, I just, Called them out in front of everybody. You don't know the difference by now? Wow, wow, what an asshole he is. Or you can over-talk them. Oh, the, the difference because the, 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 the soil has more potassium, more this. I, I'm not a farmer. This, now you're showing off. You're just showing off. Then she says, just talk to him. Oh, great question. And you look at that guy only. Do not do this. Okay, great question. Uh, the answer is this. You just talk to him. The difference between natural and Maduro, all we're doing is taking that starch and break it down for Maduro and make it its sugar so you can taste the natural sugars. Next question. I have one too. I have one too. Because now you contact or connected with that guy only. The way you answer the question, humble, because you have the knowledge, but humble, that everybody else, I have a question. Does size matter? And when I smoke in the same cigar, yes, it does. And another great question and zero to that guy. So Benji taught me that and be humble because without these guys, you are nobody, nobody. So they're asking questions for one reason. They don't know. They don't know and they want to know. So everybody has a teacher in their life that know the book, but they didn't have the ability to communicate with their model knowledge to you. And fortunately, by Nestle, a sweetheart of a teacher, Benji, Mr. Coleman, Danielle, these are pe people that trained me. And then I asked Benji, why cannot use this tobacco? Three times, four times, five times. And his answer to me always was like the first time I asked him. Like I said, Ricky, the reason we cannot use this tobacco with this one, it bites to each other. 
tomorrow, I, same thing. Ricky, like I said, the reason, and he never say, Ricky, one more time, one more time. If you don't fucking get it, you know, if you get, get it, I'm going to kill you. That's the reason. But he always taught me or humbled himself and say, okay, one more time, this is the reason. So I just took all that training, all that knowledge and say, these guys are humble guys. I need to be humble. Beautiful. Great to hear. Let's hand the microphone over to Macy. Macy, you had a question for the longest time. Fire away. Or we just lost Macy, actually. Well, then... Oh. Let's better get Jose Blanco on the show. Yes, sir. Blanco. Good to no. see you, my friend. He's a teacher. No, 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 no. I'm a student. Was he? Oh, no, 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 no. No question for him. He's first, a teacher. He's a maestro. First of all, uh, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. And I, I had told Reinhardt that I wanted to be on the show because I've known Ricky for a long time. I will have to rewatch the show tomorrow because I don't know if he's, he's, I know he's talked about Benji because he knows that Benji has been a mentor of mine for over 25 years. I call him uncle Benji. And we were, when we were doing the, uh, the show, Ricky was one of the few people with uh, Carlito, with Ernie, with Edmundo and people then have known Benji for many years. But let me tell you something about Ricky. Not only is he a student of the Leaf, but we are very fortunate to have him because Ricky many, many, many years ago went through very, very hard times. And I think he's, he's with us because God or the Almighty had something special for him. The same with me. I almost died on COVID. But let me tell you something. He's humble, he's knowledgeable, he's friendly, he has never bragged. He's always looking to learn. And look at me still at my age, I'm still trying to learn. I have to say, Ricky, when I saw that, I knew already from months ago that you were leaving. I'm not gonna get into the details, but I know it was a hard decision. But the only thing I can tell you, I wish you all the best because you've dedicated your life, the same as me, doing events, teaching people, trying to make people understand that it's not that easy to blend a cigar or to learn about tobacco. Because like I've said, I've been smoking for 56 years. I'm fourth generation. I've had the privilege to be with all the great minds, spend time with them, learn from them. And still I'm asking questions. I don't know what Ricky has talked about tonight, but I can tell you one thing. He's a winner in my book. Whatever he's up to right now, I know it'll be successful because he will not go out in the street and promote something if he's not a hundred fucking percent sure that it's a good blend. I'm gonna keep hearing you. And uh, I just wanna wish you all the best but I had a conference call and I just finished right now and I had to get on the show at least to pay my respects, to wish you all the best. And the majority of people who are here tonight, I know them all and I know they have a lot of questions and I know that you have the answers. Wishing you all the best, mi hermano. Take care of yourself. I love you so much, bro. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Reinhardt. Thank you, Jose. Many, many thanks. Now, Ricky, um, wonderful words, huh? And it's uh, it's very special to to hear it from somebody like a Professor from Jose, who himself has shaped the industry for for such a long time, and we all look up to him. So, you know, it's amazing to me uh, that you know, you know, going through your life, though, you don't, you don't often get the uh, accolades or what you think you deserve or the knowledge you have and he will know that but to hear people certain people say to me i'm proud of you um i respect you
Yeah. And rightfully so. Yeah. Wow. Delivered. Yeah. So it's amazing. This is the, uh, the power of uh, what we do. And so it's beautiful. And uh, the friendships that we make are, are life lasting. And so for me to uh, hear those words, um, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's move on because uh, <laughs> we should be just, happy. Yeah. Just a minute, Reinhardt. Ricky, I said this, but I didn't know you were going to get so emotional. So I made it light. Because if I were to go into high gear, then you would have had to get three handkerchiefs. So I just wanted to make it, you know, a little bit. Thank you, my friend. I love, I love you. Thank you so much for softballing that to me. <laughs> but uh, respect to you. You know that. Because I look at you as the second Benji of the world right now. You are a master what you do. You're a teacher of, of tobacco and you're a master. So for me to... Um, be a part of your area, your, your arena. It's just oof, wow, wow, wow. Because yeah, I, I know, yeah, I know how you look at Benji, and I know how he looks at you. Uh, after this call, I guarantee I'm going to be calling Benji. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So, all the best, <laughs> my brother. All right. Ricky, I'll, 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 as much as we love, um, you know, the emotions and, uh, mm. and, and and what this wonderful world um, means to to so many people here, um, let, let me throw you uh, uh, probably an easier one, uh, a more okay. sort of technical or product focused question from Joey over on Facebook, um, because he was curious, um, what can people expect from your first two releases? Um, what did you hope and intend to create or to convey through the first two releases? Um, the truth is, um, I knew that uh, White was be a project. We knew that uh, we're going to open a global company. So the minute I heard that we're going to be a global company, that was my leeway to say this to my partner. Allow me to make a cigar that I think the Europeans will follow me with and the other cigar, the Americans will follow me. And that's not saying that you cannot enjoy the black if you're a European and a white if you're American. But in my mind frame, you have to have a goal uh, set to you to start that project and what that goal is. And so uh, forever, uh, I toured uh, Europe seven times in seven years and so in that tour i was coming back to seg or general cigar and say we need to make a ceo cigar for that fan base in europe and they love that but it was always pushing it down the road maybe next year maybe next year maybe next year they didn't say no to me but they're always pushing it down the road and so when i was able let's do this let's focus on one side of the pond for this cigar and the other side of the pond for this cigar. And hopefully we'll bridge that, that bridge together and say, okay, I'm enjoying it. Should I enjoy that? Because the Europeans try it, try it. Are the Americans enjoying that? Try it. So that's the game plan that we have because we knew that the fan base that I have created through my past experience for CEO the love the darker wrappers, the more kind of pepper or body uh, wrappers. So that's the black. But the the Europeans are more refined in their palate. They accept more flavor over body. They just want that flavor. And so uh, they don't want a mild cigar like this is like smoking air. They have to get that flavor. And so I think we delivered on both parties. And hopefully uh, everybody's going to enjoy it, black and white, wherever you live, whatever country uh, you're living in. Uh, it's up to you to enjoy that cigar and make that decision for yourself, not for me. I've made that for Europe, not you. I made it for the U.S., not you. You be the judge. You do be the judge. And if you're a European, say, hey, bro, we vote on your black is better than what. Fine. We, we have a cigar for you. That's great. That's great. So. That's the kind of the game plan that we were uh, kind of after. Let's get over to Brian. Over to LA for a question from a dear friend, 
your back your backyard looks looks beautiful huh yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it's spring. Things are things are growing. Good afternoon. I, <laughs> no lawnmower was, today. Huh? Well, they, they, I think they actually just finished. I think I had right timing when I raised my hand. They're, they're packing up and leaving next door. Yeah, <laughs> it's a constant battle. It's like crazy. Yeah, it uh, yeah. Things are good. I turned sideways. I had the sun it was like reflecting off of things. And so, yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> we're here. I, I can't follow uh, Jose. That was beautiful. I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that was great. I remember. Dude, please don't I, follow him. Please don't no, follow yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't, Enough I don't crying. Want to text. Right. No, it's good. Yeah. We've had some crying yeah. on the show before. Yeah. I, Reinhard, yeah. I remember yeah. the, when you had Benji on the show. That was a crying show. That the yeah. amount yeah. of yeah. Yeah. respect for this man. But, um, mm hmm. hmm. So I have a kind of a lighter question. I, I was listening, you know, a lot of your um, descriptions. I, I like this uh, phrase fan base. I think I've never heard it in regards to cigars before. I like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I think you referenced music a couple of times. And I, uh, for me, I don't know how much music is a part of your life or, or influential for you, but like, it's, it's a huge part of my life. Like I can't create it like, like Reinhardt, uh, but I, I'm really good at listening to it. And I like, enjoy literally every genre. People don't believe me. So yeah. I'm wondering how much that's uh, a part of what you have going on. And, you know, I maybe incorporates some in your, your new cigars. Like, you know, I love like the, the uh, Jericho Hill and um, Juarez, you know, it, it's kind of yeah. music, you know, themed. I mean, maybe Crown Heads kind of has that taken care of. But uh, I'm just curious about the, the level of music in your life. Uh, music is very important to me. Uh, I like a fan like you. Uh, I enjoy country, uh, old country, rap, uh, new age. Uh, I love old, uh, you know, rock and roll. I, if it catches my attention, I'll listen to it. I don't care what it is. It just catches my attention. And so, uh, so big a part that my second release ever uh, for CAO called Concert. And that was my kind of, my game plan. So, Bro, music is very important to me. And I wanted a, a band that had a, a, like a ticket that you had to go to the concert. And the if you ever saw that cigar, the box looked like an amplifier. And so we had a great time. Matter of fact, I, I don't know if you see, I have the old microphone that we sung on uh, when we released a concert. Unfortunately, concert, uh, the fan base, didn't get it. Uh, they just didn't buy into it. They thought it was a gimmick. Uh, they didn't understand it and they went away from it. And so it was off the market in about 18 months. Uh, the, the, the beauty of working for Cigar, uh, General Cigar, I have two records. One, I have the highest rated cigar that General Cigar has ever received if I had a 95 rated cigar. Uh, that was just odd kind of draw driving for us when we got that rating. And so we were so proud of that rating. But I also, I have the record of or the cigar that was off the market in the, <laughs> the last amount of time, 18 months. I don't care. Just burn all the fucking packaging, all the bands, get rid of it, bury it, landfill it. I don't care, but it's dead. So I have two records that I'm proud of. One is the highest really rated cigar, and one is off the market in a time that uh, nobody <laughs> ever thought. It was going to be 18 months. Well, I mean, that's the thing you have to play, right? I think the record was at the time, Babe Ruth had the most home runs, but also the most strikeouts. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. So, uh, but, uh, you know, music is a matter of fact, uh, I'm working with a, a music uh, producer right now that has a podcast that wants to start to introduce not pairings with uh, cigars, but pairing with songs. And what album would you like to play? And he wants a blues guy. He wants a rock guy. He wants a jazz guy. He wants a reggae guy. He wants a country guy. And we're going to share these cigars. And here's my line. What cigar would you recommend for this album that you released in 1976? What, you know, what was your mind frame? I want to smoke the cigar. So I think that's going to be done uh, in about two months, and we're going to release this podcast and it's pairing music with cigars because it is very important to me. That's brilliant. I like that. That's a really great idea. I like on the Cigar Dojo app. You can there's a, a music you can post music what you're listening to while you're smoking, and mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. 
but you answered my question in the past. You had already done the thing I was asking about. Uh, that's brilliant. I love the, the the metaphor too when you were talking about uh, releasing cigars and and playing it to like a band. So, so many times you see this amazing first record and they've got the hits and it's just like huge. And then second album, you try to recreate it. They do. They try to make the same thing exactly, but tweak it like a little yeah. bit. And it's just like a recipe for disaster every time. But then you see a band that's like true to themselves and they come out with a second release that's different. They're still who they are. You're still getting them, but they're going to change it up like a Wilco, you know, and they're just like doing all different kinds of music and it and people stay engaged. So sure. pretty cool stuff. It is. Thank you so much, bro. Enjoy your Thanks. day. Cheers. Yeah. Wow. Great question. Ricky, obviously, um, Macy dropped off in the in the most terrible moment you could possibly imagine. But he he, he sent me a message that his internet died. Mm -hmm. um, but his question, mm -hmm. um, which he thankfully was able to send us through Facebook, uh, addresses a personal white whale, as he calls it, uh, which he is chasing. Um, he, he has this weird dream of growing uh, high quality cigar tobacco in Colombia. And maybe with the cigar factory to to throw on top of that, yeah. uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the CAO Colombia and uh, talk a little bit about the the, the tobacco quality from Colombia? Uh, yeah, it's a great story. It's a great story. It's a great <laughs> story because uh, I was uh, in the uh, factory um, and um, I got a call that uh, we needed to go by Posizia to see this new tobacco that they, they want to show us. And so they didn't say anything about the tobacco. They said, there's a new tobacco. We don't know if we want to use it or not, just check it out. So the factory manager and me went to Presencia. Walking out at that time was Watford Patel. And says, oh, well, bro, what are you doing here? I'm here to see new tobacco, Rocky. So move aside. I've worked for a general cigar the big boy. So they're going to show me first the tobacco. He said, bro, I don't know what you're here for or what you're going to see, but they just tried to show me some tobacco from Colombia. Bro, walk away from it. It is the worst tobacco I ever experienced. So I walked in, I said, you know, it's not going to be Colombia. They were going to show you first. They're going to show SDG first. So I walked in and Mr. Potencio was there. Rick, right now I'm going to show you some tobacco that I think will be perfect for Seattle. Let me introduce you to, and he unveiled his fucking big cologne of tobacco from Colombia. What? Colombia. Now, I heard that Rocky didn't like it. So this is the information sometimes, and I'll share this, how important it is not to share your blends sometimes with your fan base before they smoke it because they have concepts of certain things. And so, okay, so they rolled me a Fuma and said, smoke this tobacco. And I smoked it, I looked at, okay, perfect. Okay, let, we'll let you know. I walked out, bro, wow, that tobacco. And Augustine, why did you not like it? Bro, it's so salty. It, I mean, I, I need some water. It's just salty. I went back to, back to the factory two year, days later, Ricky, uh, good news. We just purchased all that tobacco from Presencia. Whoa, 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 whoa. I said I didn't like it. Oh, bless your heart. You think we're asking you for permission. No, this is a good situation. You have to work with this tobacco. <laughs> so we started a blend. What I discovered was that tobacco single was awful. It was like if I served you a steak, but don't put salt in that steak. And when you're eating it, let me do this. Here's a spoonful of salt. Taste that to taste your steak. You're going to not like it. Put the same spoon of salt over the steak and you put cook it. Oh my God. So what we discovered that tobacco in its own is not good, but that tobacco in a blend works magic. And it's one of my favorite blends to start my day with. One of my favorite blends that my shot by my, my little, you know, uh, 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 guys come over to my house. They always go for Colombia. These are full body cigars, guys. I'm going to start with Colombia, open my palate and smoke 
whatever he wants to smoke after that. But they all love this. And so it taught me a lesson. Do not judge something before you work with something because you don't know the magic that something's going to provide to you. So if I'm you, I will go to uh, Columbia and start to grow because they have some great soil and there's some great tobacco. I don't know if they're there for wrap right now. I think they're only a filler country, but uh, maybe you can work with some farmers and start to grow some wrapper. And I would really be interested to see what you guys could deliver. Because if you look at Colombia and if you look at um, um, uh, uh, Ecuador, kind of in that same uh, set category, but they, I, I, I'm assuming a lot of their farmlands are on the seashore. That's the reason that uh, the tobacco is so salty because that sea breeze blows into the, uh, the farm and that settles on that tobacco. Talk about uh, landmarks, can you hear them? My guys are here, so let me shut this door. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, that's a, that's a great question. And I'm sure that, that Macy will be overly excited and over the moon to hear that um, he, can, he can probably work on making this dream come true. And yeah, then for sure, for sure. In Colombia. And then maybe- we're all looking for uh, new tobaccos, everybody. But uh, you know, to get wrapper to get to the market, you have to realize it's going to be a, a you know, two to three or a, a three to five years because your first growing, you just mow it down. You don't reuse it. Your second growing, you mow it down. The third growing, you start to see what you have. And the second growing, the third, fourth, fifth. So, so sometimes it'll take you two, three, four years. To the, the 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 tobacco that you want to offer uh, factories, but be too patient. And I think you, if you do it right, you're going to have some uh, exciting tobacco that everybody wants to work with. Beautiful, good to know. Jason, over to you. Hey, Ricky, how you doing, buddy? Well, I do that. <laughs> you should be here with me. You should be I know here I should with be me. there. Hey, got, Rano, thanks for uh, letting me on. Um, you know, I've known Ricky for, for a couple of days, oh. and I've spent about half my life in Tampa. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Ricky, uh, my question is, I mean, you know how much I love West Tampa. You know how much I love Ebor. How much? But am I ever going to be able to come to West Tampa, go to your shop, and get a hand roll there made in the shop? Uh, not right go now. Give me a, uh, go uh, go uh, get yeah. me a Cuban and come over with some coffee? Yeah. Yeah, no, not right now because uh, you know we're spending the money on making cigars. So we're, right now we don't have any warehouse or office space in Tampa. I'm working for my house in uh, the course. factory, and so uh, it, in the future I'm never going to say never because we want to do something in Tampa uh, to have a location that people can visit Tampa and we can walk it through the process and all that. But right now we don't have the plan. But um, never say never. But we always have the garage. We I know. Have, I know. Yeah, I yeah know. we always have the garage, bro. Yeah, and, and, and I can't wait. I haven't got one of your sticks yet, but I, you know, I um, I love both sides. I love the the dark and the spicy and the and the sweet and the you know that because of, of what you see me smoking. And, and the Columbia, one of my all time yeah. favorite morning cigars. As it's well. amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's truly it's amazing. amazing. And um, I look forward to everything. And God bless you, buddy. I wish you nothing but success, and I'm here to help any way you need. Okay. I know, bro. I love you, bro. I'll see you soon. Uh, uh, yeah, you will. Text me your address, and I'll send you some cigars to sample. Please. Uh, it be, be, be done about five minutes. <laughs> Perfect. I love it, bro. All I right. love it. Ryan right, right. thanks for uh, letting me speak. Uh, take care, brother. Love you, man. An absolute pleasure, Jason. Many thanks for, for tuning in. And then we have one more question from David. Hey, Ricky. How are you doing? Bro, great. And you? Good, good. Now, I, I haven't had a chance to meet you, but I've met a lot of people who know you. And I've heard nothing but positive feedback from them uh, talking about how much you've changed CAO from the name it was to it, to it is now. Uh, my question is whether it's you're starting up, whether you're starting up a retail shop, your own cigar company, whatever you're start, trying to start in this industry. What's the best advice that you can give to somebody who's trying to start? Take care of your people. Take care of your people. Uh, uh, if you're a shop owner, 
take care of your fan base for your shop uh, because there's so many shops out there in the world. Everybody has the same cigars. Everybody has the same price points. Why do you travel to this location? Because this owner treats us like family. He doesn't care if I buy one cigar or 1,000 cigars. He treats me with the same respect. Thank you so much for shopping in my uh, shop, and I'll see you tomorrow. And so take care of people from your fan base to your employees. And if you own a factory, realize the guy that's sweeping the floor on that factory is equal important as the general manager is running the factory. Why? Because everybody wants to come to work in a clean environment. Feel safe. Feel like a bro. Look at this pig sty. And you want me to care about my product? So if you concentrate and you introduce yourself to who's that guy oh that bro it's jose he's just sweeping the floor i want to meet him i want to talk to him i want to thank him for sweeping the, the best fucking sports sweeper in in the world because look at around i would eat out this floor because you take pride of what you're doing you're not a cigar roller you're not a cigar master but you keeping my factory clean and i want to go back there because it's beautiful so respect your people treat everybody with the decency they respect from it bro we're all humans we all have bad days and good days and how you react to those situations is everything know this sometimes a cigar roller is rolling a bad cigar you can go and spank his hand what the fuck are you doing you're not concentrating if you peel that onion back, why are you not caught? My baby is sick. My baby, I left the house. She had a 102 temperature. I mean, his mind is at home. Bro, go home. Go home. Don't worry. I'll pay you. Go home. Take care of your family. Get that out of your mind so you can do your job that I know you can do. So uh, you have to react to such uh, situations. You are under pressure to make cigars, but sometimes... There's a lot of things going on in the world that you don't have any clue to if you don't ask these questions and what's happening. Well, why are you not? I know you. I know how you produce cigars. It's not the right. My kids are sick. Go home. Go home. And so that's the way General Cigar has always taught me. Uh, we are never penalized anybody that showed up for, for five minutes. We paid them for eight hours. Go home. And so, because now, if you're a Friday, you're thinking about the weekend, and that's that's different. You got to be kidding me, bro. You, you got to yeah. be kidding me. Your work is going to be here in six hours. Just concentrate. But uh, sometimes it's more problems in home because these countries are suffering and they have problems, bro. Yeah. And Ricky, Respect. I think that uh, ultimately what's, what's happening is you, you create a certain culture Yes. You nurture that, and and it takes a a particular not just mindset, but I believe it's very much in the heart and soul, and how you 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 think about human people relationship, and th the way you build this is so important, and will ultimately always set up your company for success. And you know, in in, in today's show, I mean, this is one of the one of the first interviews that uh, you've ever given about West Tampa. And we, we don't really talk, you know, all too much about uh, Phila Binder and Rapper and, and just give us all the technical details about your, your cigar. Plenty of that will, will come later. But what I really wanted to do with you and give everybody who's joining us today an opportunity to learn and understand is the incredible quality that you carry in your heart and your soul as a human being, the way you are and the way you not only have set up this company, but the way you will run it and continuously take it a step further, evolve it, but together with all the people, that's what's very special. And, and that's what I want to, to share with everybody today is that the, the, the core foundation and the building blocks of what West Tampa will be is that quality of, of, of you as a human being and, and the values that you hold dear and the culture that you're creating and nurturing.
It's amazing. It's amazing that you have the power to, like I said to you earlier, I have the power to change people's life. Not only money. It's not money. It's respect. Uh, I just did a photo shoot. Uh, this, this is a kind of a classic case of a face go doing a photo shoot. What we typically do is go in and take a picture behind a roller. And you got it? All right, you leave. What I did was, now, because it's smaller, too, it's smaller, uh, I took a picture with everybody. So I didn't single out one person and make them the star of the factory. And everybody's jealous. Well, he didn't talk to me. He didn't take a picture of me. I'm doing the same thing that guy's doing in front of me. But he took, I purposely said to the photographer, we're going to spend the day taking pictures with everybody. Now, do we use every picture? No. But I said to the, uh, the uh, owner of the factory, I want you to develop every picture we took and put it on your wall. And that is your wall of fame. So I want these rollers to go to work every day seeing their picture with me. They connected with me. And they're a part of this big program, not only one or two people that were lucky that I was standing behind them and we're going to use this picture only. And the rest of you guys don't care about you because we picked out the pretty people to take that photo with. And so no, I didn't do that. So I went to everybody, fan girls, packaging, uh, blenders, rollers. We took a picture with everybody and everybody's going to have the opportunity to see them with me on that wall. Beautiful. It's all about paying respect, um, which yes. you also do yes. to, to your family history, right? There's a, there's a written dedication um, to, to your family history inside every every single box um I, I think people will only understand over the next months and, and years all the little intricate details and nuances that you have put into this project because with uh, with your tremendous experience in so many years um learning from the very best working alongside the very best and you becoming an icon of the industry yourself you know you collect all these little golden nuggets and then somehow miraculously they find their way into your creation and and, and people can only start to unlayer that um, step by step and, and see all the beauty behind your project and i can't wait mm -hmm. for everybody to have a chance to try this can't wait to try it myself hopefully much much sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, we need to, to talk to Sign because Sign has so many cigars. We <laughs> need to get to a couple of cigars. I, I'm so sorry. I th thought you already had them. My bad. Uh, again, no, assuming no, 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 no. something that uh, we didn't uh, do. So, uh, but we'll take Thank care you, of the, that. The true blessing sure. will be sitting down with you and sharing a yeah. cigar in person. Yeah. So I love we'll, that. we'll take care of that rather sooner than later. Before we wrap things off, um, we, we shared so many wonderful stories, um, culture, heart and soul, and, and even tears. Um, what are some of the final thoughts that, that you would like to, to leave us with? And, and probably something that um, is, is burning under your fingernails about what West Tampa Tobacco Company shall be and will be in the future that we haven't spoken about yet. That's a very dramatic freeze, right? With the final question and, and, and the big bang, we, before we wrap up the show, Ricky freezes in an instant. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Ricky back for, for, for a final goodbye. Um, in the meantime, if, if any of you guys uh, here at the lounge via Zoom, if you still have questions or comments, chime in, feel free to share your thoughts with us. What are you all smoking today? And Jason, I'm curious, where are you joining from? Are you just around the corner? Because then you you might go knocking on, on, on Ricky's door and tell him. No, I, I am sequestered uh, in uh, Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Alabama. So, so let's just say that, um, now I, I, for those of you who know me, uh, I own a small uh, tequila company and I travel all over the, the, the country. Uh, you know, we're, we're growing shortly, but um, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on the car and I'm, and I'm flying most of the time when I get a chance. My family has houses here and there's nothing like being in the country and sitting out in the heat and uh, 
drinking coffee and uh, smoking a cigar in the morning. I haven't, I haven't had one this morning because I had three conference calls before I got on this and I was late getting on here, but um, I, I'm just going to say this uh, about Ricky while he gets back on. There's never, there's not been a guy more kind to me in what I'm doing than Ricky Rodriguez. There's not been a guy more hospitable to me and to everyone I've ever seen him interact with. He is truly the guy who deserves to be the number one ambassador, roller, uh, maker, owner of a cigar brand. And West Tampa is close to my heart because that's where my, that's where I, I, I tell everybody I, 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 I you know, I, I grew up, I matured as an adult and um, there's been nobody that embodies what it means to me to be uh, not a Tampa native, but a, but a Tampa, uh, you know, reborn uh, guy. And uh, that's Ricky. And I just wish him all the best in the world. Bro, really thank you so much. You. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, ending, uh, you know, um, what I want you guys to enjoy is take this journey with us take this journey with us because a lot of times you know a lot of cigars that you're a fan of are started the business 20 years ago 30 years ago if you look at uh you know uh you know a general cigar 50 years ago so you don't have the opportunity to see a company start day one and follow this company if you like that individual and believe in that guy so i think it's going to be fun for everybody to enjoy this journey with us and see where this is going to take us and be a part of something that I was there at the beginning and I'm here today 10 years from now and so I think the ride is going to be up and down and I think you're going to love every uh, every tis, uh, twist and turn that uh, West Tampa is going to provide for you. Brilliant. Ricky, I think that's a wonderful way to to wrap up this session and and uh, a wonderful way to to end on the high um there's so much more to to discover and to learn about west tampa and i know all the people are curious to hear more about it um, enjoy those cigars and follow your journey uh, join you on this on this incredible ride and i'm i'm very honored blessed and grateful to to call you a fellow uh, a dear friend and a brother on this journey as well yeah. so Thanks I love you, bro. You too. Respect and love you. Yeah, respect uh, right away and love you second. But uh, you're the best. All right. It Thank you so much for the time to uh, share my little story. And uh, uh, like I said, this is the first of many stories that we're going to be able to share together. And I'm very, very blessed and fortunate to continue sharing those stories together with you and everybody who's willing to, to come and listen and join us. It's all about community and being together. Rick, thank you from heart. All the very best. Be blessed and well. And uh, may West Tampa be a, a wonderful blossom that uh, okay. we're all blessed to, to, to enjoy and, and, and continue following and, and watching. Thank you. From your lips to God's ears. Thank you so much for Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for tonight. Great job. Great right job.